everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody's doing well. And today, for what does Dave think, I think we've got a little bit of a hot one on tap for you. I hope you enjoy it. It has certainly made the news since last Thursday when the announcement come down, and I am talking about the Starlink Satellite Internet Services 1 terabyte data caps. Now, social media has gone ballistic. Oh, he promised unlimited. Well, bottom line is he never promised unlimited. It was always said that data caps could be a part of the future, and here they are. The app for those that have Starlink is updated now to show your data usage, and it does show that the 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. window is data cap free. But before we get into all the details, let's kind of jump into what I'm seeing. First of all, what I'm seeing is social media is going ballistic. And I think people have to understand who Starlink is for. Starlink was never designed to compete with DSL, never designed to compete with cable, and certainly never designed to compete with fiber. And for those that have those options available, it has been assumed that you would take those options if they met your needs and were reasonably competitive. Starlink is designed for the person, the nomad, the traveler, the boats now, and I believe there's even an option for some aerial service for folks that can't get quality high-speed service. Bottom line is it's not designed to compete with a terrestrial type service like I said such as cable, some DSL, and certainly not fiber. And the folks that can't get those services have been paying hundreds of dollars sometimes more for subpar services just to get access to what some folks call basic necessities. The ability for their children to go to school, their ability for them to work from home, the ability for them to make a living and at least be connected. We're not even talking about the ability to be able to stream or the ability to be able to play games or the ability to watch a 4K movie. There's a lot of folks that can't do that and still, even with Starlink out there, can't do that. And then the cap comes out and people suddenly blow, you know, blow up social media because it's there. And bottom line is most of you don't know how much data you use. Now, sure, if you're going to download your, your your Steam library a couple times a month, you're going to you know load up your Xbox and format your hard drives a couple times a month. It, it'll take no time at all to hit that one terabyte cap. But if you're being smart with your data usage, most people will never hit the one terabyte cap. And even if you do. It's not like HughesNet, it's not like Viasat that slow you down to one meg, two meg, or three meg. It just drops you back to the basic tier, which is the equivalent of RV service. So you're looking at, you know, 50, 75 megs in most cases, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And for the folks that Starlink is meant for, 5075 meg is a gift. Some people are out there, folks, on 3, 5, and 10 meg DSL or worse. And you have to remember, the cell phone providers did the same thing. The cell phone providers have been doing the same thing. And what do we all do? We pay for that plan every month. If we hit that cap, 
which is 22 gigs in some cases. Some cases it's 50 gig and AT&T has a new elite plan that they say never throttles. If you hit that limit, you're throttled down. And then you go pay more. Well, that's essentially what's going on here with Starlink. Rumor is it's 25 cent per gigabyte. Some people have said it's 25 cent per terabyte. What I saw was 25 cent per gigabyte. And I think if most people who use the Starlink service as it was designed, for example, when Starlink came out, you know, oh joy, I can stream, I can stream live television. But what did you have before Starlink? You know, you had, in most cases, I would say you had direct TV for your entertainment or Dish Network. Well, if you're still using DirecTV or Dish Network, then obviously you're not streaming. You're not hitting that cap. Maybe for those Starlink is designed for, you go back to Dish Network, you go back to DirecTV, if you stream enough to impact the cap. And most people just need to do a little bit of paying attention to what they do. If you're working eight hours a day and your children are at school, even if you're a family of three, four, or five or more, there should be no pulling on that cap. So you've only got a few hours a day, say when the kids get home from school and the, you know, and the parents get home from work, to eat on that cat because free time kicks in at 11 p.m. So I don't think the one terabyte cap is all that extreme. Extreme for some, yes. Extreme for somebody downloading a 100 gig game every day, absolutely. Extreme for someone wanting to stream 4K content natively on several TVs in a household? Yes. But sit back and look at your usage. Most people are scrolling social media and watching videos. What are you doing that on? You're doing it on your phone in most cases and you're taking for granted that your phone is connected to Wi-Fi. So why not reach over there and flip that Wi-Fi off and use some of that cellular data that you're probably paying for and not using. Balance it out, folks. Nobody likes data caps, but data caps on shared internet services are just a simple reality. We're all gonna have to deal with them if you're on a shared internet service at a low cost. Now you can get high cost internet services, five, six, seven, eight thousand, whatever you want to pay a month. And have your bandwidth, no limits, no caps, no nothing. Most carriers will sell that to you. It's usually a dedicated circuit. But you don't want to pay that. You want the low cost. You want it unlimited, you don't want to share it, and you want it blazing fast. You can't have all of those. Most people would be, you know, that Starlink was designed for would be happy with a steady 25, 30, 40, 50 meg service with a 10 meg upload. Anything above that for some people is icing on the cake. I would say in my years of experience, most people could get by with 100, and 10, 100, 100 down and 10 up. Enough to stream, run a few downloads, and be able to upload some files or, or, or do a webcam or do a, do a little Twitch streaming. 
We've all been spoiled by wanting things instantly. Sometimes you have to pay for that. Sometimes you have to look at what's in front of you and go, what I had, what I can get with Starlink is certainly a great upgrade compared to what my other options are. We're all fighting for connectivity. Embrace what Starlink has done we would all still be digging for connectivity had Mr. Elon not made the decisions he's made and done the things he's done. Remember, he's got to make enough money to make Starlink a viable option and a stable financial option in the future. Launching satellites is not cheap. Getting enough internet feeds to feed the world is not cheap. Think about it. Watch your data usage. Look at the phone data that you're not using. Maybe instead of flipping the phone on Wi-Fi, flip it on the cell tower if you can get something. Think about it, folks. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Starlink data caps. You are welcome to leave your comments down below. I would look forward to reading them. And I hope everybody's doing well. Please feel free to leave your comments below. How much data do you use? Is the Starlink data app showing you how much data you use? If so, what are you doing with your Starlink collection? How many people's in your house? I'd like to know. Put it down below. Take care, folks, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.